Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Quantity, Level 6, Orders of Magnitude. After watching this video, you should be able to calculate and compare orders of magnitude in different animals, like a whale all the way to a fly, or looking at different parts of an ecosystem, be it biodiversity or surface area. We're going to start by calculating orders of magnitude for these bundles of Lego and also looking at the mass of these different objects. Um, the first thing you always want to do is define what are we looking at. So what's the system? And then what we're really trying to do with orders of magnitude is we're trying to identify the quantity. So not only the number and the units, but we're really trying to get a sense of the magnitude. How big is that quantity or how small is that quantity? So we use what's called an order of magnitude. First you find the quantity and then we start to calculate the order of magnitude. For quantity, remember our block is this block that you would use to weigh things. But if you think about this block, imagine if there were the, this were 10 times the weight, or if this were 10 times the height. As we go 10 times anything, we're really getting to orders of magnitude. So an order of magnitude is just an approximation of the logarithm to a reference value, usually 10. Wow, that was a mouthful. So give me a second, I'll get these out of the box and then we'll make sense of what that means. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to identify what is the system that we're going to investigate. So in this case, we're going to investigate these three bundles of Lego. The next thing we do is we write down the quantity. What quantity do we have of each of these? So I'm going to write those out in kind of a weird way, and then I'll explain why I wrote it out that way. Okay, so we have some nice quantities here. We have one Lego, this white Lego. We've got 10 Lego, which is this column, and then we've got these 10 stacks of those 10. So we have 100 Lego right there. Um, the way I wrote it out, or the reason I wrote it out, is that this now represents the column of ones. So this is one one, and this is zero ones. Um, likewise, what does this one stand for? That is 100. And so I'm gonna put those down below, and that'll help us make sense. So when I write it out like this, when I, when I write the number 10, what I really have is one in the tens column and zero in the ones column. And so the reason that's important is that an order of magnitude is really the log of a value. And so we approximate that to 10. So basically what does that mean? This is 10, so this is zero ones, but one 10. And so as far as orders of magnitude go, we would say that this value, the value or the quantity of 10 Lego, is going to be an order of magnitude of one. If we go to the next one, 100 Lego is really 10 tens or 100. And so uh, how do we write that in orders of magnitude? That's going to be two. So even though we're increasing the number from 10 to 10 fold or 10 times that amount, we really are only increasing the order of magnitude from one to two. So it's an increase of one order of magnitude. You can see this is helpful if we're looking at really large numbers or really, really small numbers. You might be thinking, well, what is one Lego then? How many orders of magnitude would that be? We would say that is simply zero. So there's zero orders of magnitude. And so what could I say? If we compare this, one Lego and 100 Lego, we could say there's a two uh, orders of magnitude difference, or this is two orders of magnitude larger than this is. Or we could say one Lego is two orders of magnitude smaller than this is. So it's a really quick way to compare these really big values. Now, we made it real simple with 110 and 100, but imagine if I take, uh, let's just take these two off and we put them on this one. And then we adjust the values. And so now this got two more. So we could say that is a three in the ones. And now this is, we've taken two away. So I would call this 98. A lot of the time the values we're going to have are not just round values. And so now do we have to adjust the orders of magnitude? 
Well, not really, because if we think about this first one, 3, is it closer to 1 or is it closer to a 10? I would say it's still closer to a 1, and so that would be 0 orders of magnitude. If we look at this 98, is it closer to a 10 or is it closer to a 100? It's definitely, you can see us rounding up, it's closer to 100, so that would still be 2. So I really would have to change this number quite a bit. So if I were to change this to 998 Lego, that would be a huge stack. It would fill a lot of this table. If we had 998 Lego, how many orders of magnitude would that be? That would actually be three orders of magnitude because this is much closer to a thousand. So every time we go up to a 10, that's one order of magnitude, two orders, three orders. This would be zero orders. You can even go decimal. So it's like negative one, negative two. So orders of magnitude are a really good way to just compare values and approximate values. It takes a little while to get used to, but once you get it figured out, you'll be seeing orders of magnitude everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is clear this out, and then I'm gonna give you another example, and you're gonna try to figure out the orders of magnitude. Okay, for this next example, what I have are these three cubes. So the first thing I should do is define the system. So the system is going to be these three large cubes, or relatively large cubes. Now if we were to write down the quantity of, let's say, the volume of these cubes, you can see since the wood cube and the aluminum cube and the tungsten cube all have the same volume, roughly, they would all have the same orders of magnitude. And so that might not be helpful in us comparing these. But what I'm going to do instead is we're going to get the mass of these and we'll see something very interesting. Okay, so what's interesting about this is the the wood cube only weighs 32 grams and then this tungsten cube weighs nearly a thousand grams and so even as I pick it up this is really hard to pick up and this one is really easy to pick up. In fact, after I've picked up this one, it's hard for me to pick up the other ones. And so now what we've got is we've got quantity. It gives us a number and also it gives us the unit. But what we're going to try to figure out then is what are the orders of magnitude. So what I would encourage you to do is pause the video. You could do it on the thinking slides below or just on a sheet of paper, but try to calculate what are the orders of magnitude of the three large cubes that we have in the system. As you do that, uh, I'll write uh, our different units along the bottom. All right, so if we start with the first one, so the first one is the wooden cube. Uh, it's 32 grams. Remember, an order of magnitude, we're really looking towards an approximation of the log of a reference value, which is always 10. So you're always looking to remember for the column of 10s. So 32, is it closer to 10 or is it closer to 100? I would say it's, it's closer to 10. And so if I were to choose the orders of magnitude, I would write 1 for orders of magnitude. If we go to the next one, 149 grams, a way to think about that is 149, is it closer to 100 or is it closer to a 10 or is it closer to a 1,000? And I would say it's closer to 100 if we were to approximate, so I would call that two orders of magnitude. And then if we do the last one, even though they may have the same place values, basically, we could say they're in the hundreds column here. This one, 999 grams, is essentially a kilogram, which is a thousand grams, which means that this is three orders of magnitude. And so what do we, how do we compare that? A way that you could compare it is to say um, the wood is two orders of magnitude um, less mass or uh, less quantifiable than the uh, tungsten cube. Or you could say the tungsten cube is two orders of magnitudes heavier is maybe a better way to say it than the wooden cube. And so it's interesting that even though these look the same, we have to do some measurements to see that there are huge differences that you would only know if you actually picked it up or if you started to calculate it. So what I'd have you do next is I've got some data. Um, you could use the thinking slides below or just use a piece of paper.
and what I want you to do is try to figure out what are the orders of magnitude of these values. I put some tricky ones in here so there's going to be decimal values. There's always a key so you can see what the right answer is. And then we've got two things you could look at. Surface area or we could look at the biodiversity in these ecosystems. One of the largest ecosystems you're probably familiar with would be the Amazon rainforest but we also have this tiny little pond called Devil's Hole in Nevada. You could take a look at that as well. So again, orders of magnitude, the only way you can really figure this out is just by playing around with it and doing it. Um, but that is how we look at quantity, level six orders of magnitude, and I hope that's helpful.